Welcome to Binging Last Season, where, despite what the name sounds like, I binge anime from last season and tell you if it's worth watching another show about an OP protagonist at a magic school, and why the answer might actually be yes. Unlike the reviewers on my anime list, I'll, I'll actually, actually be using, using their, their grading, grading scale and validating what I say. I say. Like most of today's youth, I also have brain rot. I don't want to wait a whole week to find out what happens next. I want to know now, which is why I wait until the end of a season, then I go back and binge all the episodes, unless they trick me by having 24 episodes like Shangri-La Frontier. Show me more Birdman! Bird up. So this series will only be covering seasons of shows that have already finished airing. And today that show is the Demon Sword Master of Excalibur Academy. I'll be using minimal spoilers to explain the premise and showing scenes that don't give too much away, but if you don't want to see any spoilers, then- You need to leave! It starts out pretty simple. Demon Lord is getting beat, Demon Lord goes to sleep, he wakes up sometime later, and I'm a ten year old boy! FBI, open up! He's taken in by babes, some stuff happens, and. The show is actually kinda set up perfect for me to hate it. I don't like awkward harem vibes, I don't like future settings, and I hate what's going on with this guy. But this show actually surprised me with some of its high points, but before that, let's talk about the bad stuff. If you're looking for good animation, then you can sit this one out. The budget was like $5, and that becomes really apparent when they start reusing animations in the final episode, which is also when they decided to bust out the 3D models for some characters, which left my jaw on the floor because they had not shown up before, and it was very much unwelcome, and they also never really animated any of their big fight moments, which at some point just became Deus Ex Ragna Lost. Speaking of Deus Ex Ragna Lost, if you're looking for a show that really keeps you on the edge of your seat guessing what's gonna happen next, this isn't it. Literally every time they tease a plot point and you go, oh I wonder if that's what's gonna happen. Spoiler, that's what happens. At times it felt like two minutes into the episode they would say, hey, this is how the episode is gonna go. And then that's how the episode goes, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Lastly, if you don't like weird, etchy vibes, why the fuck are you watching anime? So if I didn't like the writing, or the action, or the animation, then what the fuck did I like? Well, first of all, it's got some pretty funny moments. Don't skip any of the post credit shorts. They're all good. Weirdly enough, I also really liked the setting. I know I said I don't like future settings, and it's true. Like, for instance, I don't like mechas at all. I liked 86 despite the fact that it's a mecha. I like like Eden Zero, despite the futuristic weapons and spaceships and whatnot. Look, I know I said I wasn't gonna include any major scenes from the show, but I fucking lied, didn't I? Look at this shit. Look at how fucking cool this is. For a show that so consistently shits the bed in its action sequences, this scene blew my fucking mind. They put the Iron Dome on a fucking boat, bro. We're so back! <laughs> We're so back! Beyond exclusively that scene, I thought the show did a really good job at bringing aspects of fantasy, which is my favorite genre, into science tech future bullshit. But the greatest highlight of the show to me, the most important thing that they got absolutely correct, is that their goddess looks like Tharja. Let's fucking go, boys! No, no, I'm kidding. But it is true, let's fucking go, boys. The greatest success in this show is the world that it takes place in. But Celery, that's just the setting again. Shut up! Credit to the author, this world has history. It feels like what we're watching on the screen is just a small part of what's actually going on in the grand scheme of things. Nothing ever really feels ham-fisted or shoehorned in, and for every piece of information about the world that's revealed to us through the main story, it seems like there's a ton of background information that we just haven't found out yet. One thing that I've noticed with a lot of series that I watch is that it feels like the world is shallow. It seems like everything that is happening in the world is happening on the screen in front of us. Which is why I really enjoyed the moments in this series where it said, hey, there's something else happening somewhere else. We're not there. We're not witnessing it. We're not going to see it. Just know that it's happening. It just made the world feel more realistic. Granted, most of these plot points aren't even that big of a deal. There's just something that this show did differently to make you feel like they mattered. So yeah, there were things about this show that I thought differentiated it English, from the typical trash. It was elevated from trash to L trash, but it's not quite arc trash. I gave it a seven out of 10. It's closer to a six than an eight, but if you've got four and a half hours to throw at this thing, then give it a try and let me know what you think. If you like how I wasted five minutes of your time, you're gonna love how they waste five hours.